podcast and video series to bring you stories of HR professionals who bring a think globally and act locally digital HR agenda to their work. Everyday people who are driving digital transformations in their organizations, data-driven and future-fit digital HR leaders. This is your host, Jay Pulaki, and today's guest needs no introduction. It's Enrique Rubio from Hacking HR. Welcome to the show, Enrique. How are you today? Hi, Jay. Thank you so much for inviting me. Good, you know, I'm I'm positive, optimistic, and uh, and uh, you know we're recording this on a Friday. I don't know when you're gonna put it out, but you know, uh, it's all, all all things considered, I'm 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 good, thankfully. Uh, how about you? I'm doing great. I mean, 2021 had a you know few starting issues, but I think we'll be fine, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like uh, like setting a computer that doesn't want to start, but then when it starts, it it works well. Yeah, that's that's the way I see it too. You know, it, I'll, I'll, a few hiccups along the way, but hopefully it's all going to be better uh, uh, overall. Absolutely. No blue screens yet. So that's a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) So Enrique, you know, you've been in the midst of all of this with the HR hacking community that you run and all the different, uh, you know, viewpoints that you bring to the fore related to agile HR and HR technology. I really wanted to get your take on how you think HR has adapted to the changes that the pandemic has brought about in our life and work. And um, what do you think uh, you, um, you know, HR should be prepared for in 2021? Yeah, well, last year, since the pandemic started, of course, I, I think we were, a lot of us were caught off guard. A lot of organizations were caught off guard in, in the sense of, um, you know, having flexible practices and having processes that could work in an emergency situation like COVID. So, you know, HR really had to pick to pick up the pieces pretty quickly of a very broken situation and, and put them together really quickly to keep their organizations operating and to keep their people working and well, of course. Uh, so, so, of course, HR had to adapt and change and transform processes, systems, po- policies, and a lot of other things to make sure that things continued operating even uh, despite the, the situation created by the pandemic. The one thing, of course, that I that I have to mention is that while HR deserves kudos for the hard work in 2020, I also know that a lot of the things that we did were were very reactive to the situation when we could have been prepared for some of them, right? And I give you the the, the basic, the most basic example of all, which is remote work. We, you know, for years, we knew that remote work was a trend and it was going to continue to have more impact in the workplace and whatnot. And many organizations, including their HR functions, they didn't think that remote work was ever going to happen to them, that it was going to be a thing for them. So pandemic comes, everybody's sent into lockdown, and these organizations that knew from before that remote work was something, they were caught off guard, and now they were scrambling the pieces to uh, get ready for remote work. So to me, we did a great, HR did a great work last year, but it, it was still very reactive. So now we have to turn over the page and say, okay, we have proven that we have the capacity to react, to change, to transform ourselves. How can we do that? But instead of reactively, how can we do that proactively? And that connects to your second question, which is what do I see for 2021? Uh, You know, I see, you know, maybe two or three things. Number one, and perhaps at least for me and for a lot of other people, but, you know, very, very close to my heart, one of the most important trends or elements or situations that we're gonna be dealing with in 2021 is mental health. We have to address all things mental health related. Are, there are people talking already about a second wave of the pandemic or a second pandemic, which is the mental health implications, including more stress, depression, uh, increased deaths by suicide, increased abuse of you know, substance abuse, and we need to prepare for this. This is not just something 
I, I'm hoping that this, not, this doesn't become something along the lines of remote work. We knew it was going to happen, but we never get, get ready for it. I'm hoping that we take this seriously and we get ready for it. So mental health, flexibility in the workplace, because as we you know, get transition into the vaccination and hopefully the rates of infection go down, deaths go down. We, some companies may go back to a hybrid approach instead of just remote or instead of just in person. So HR, we have to build more flexibility in the workplace and we need to see how we do that. The third thing, which is not a new thing, is learning. You know, we're going to have to continue to invest in our learning. And of course, the fourth thing continues to be a trend that started many years ago, which is the impact of technology at, you know, for humans and in the workplace. So I think those four things are going to keep HR very, very busy. You know, a lot of programs kick off in March for HR, um, yeah. especially with what's happening in our society. I think um, not only with the BLM movement and all the other e equity challenges that we faced this past year, this is one thing I think we should, as HR leaders, definitely pay attention to and be more yeah. proactive than reactive. And, and those yeah. insights you provided really resonate with my work as well. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you know, HR professionals have really taken on the challenge this past year and adopted new technology at warp speed. Um, what's one piece of advice you have for our HR colleagues when it comes to adopting new technology or learning new technology in 2021? I would say the same thing that I've been saying for a long time, even before the pandemic. Technology is an enabler. Technology is an amplifier. But technology, as of now, cannot discern whether what it is amplifying is good or not. That's, that is a human-made decision. Let me give you one example of this, Jay. We, we had so many meetings in the workplace before the pandemic, meetings that we, did, we never needed but we still had a lot of meetings. They were a waste of time, distracting people from the work, from their, you know, their, their creation, their craft, and people needed to go into meetings, 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 meetings. Now we moved into the online world. We have the technology to meet and it's seamless. You and I, you are in the East Coast, I'm in, in the West, in Arizona, we're meeting, it's all looking fantastic. But the question is, we are, or the reflection is we are, amplified in our capacity and our, and our possibilities to connect through this amazing Zoom technology. But do we need to have 20 meetings every day? So Zoom is there to amplify what you can do. The question is, do we need these meetings? And that may seem like a meaningless example, but it's really not because it talks about how we can decide in the workplace, you know what? We need to change these processes. We need to make the human decision to change these processes and then bring technology on board to amplify the new process or the new system or the new uh, you know, uh, uh, design that we have because that is what really works. We don't want technology to amplify crappiness. So my <laughs> message here to, to HR professionals is, Look into the technology, learn the technology, but before getting there, step back and look into your workplace policies. Look into your systems, into your processes, uh, into your guidelines, and then redesign whatever needs to be redesigned and only then include technology. And probably, Jay, you're going to ask me this question in 2025, and I will continue to say the same thing, right? It is... Technology is an amplifier, it's an enabler. We got to make the human decision behind scenes to define what is it that we need to be, uh, to have amplified, enhanced, or improved uh, by technology and how we need to change that before actually bringing on the technology. Absolutely. I, I just read an article, or actually it was a LinkedIn live session that I, you know, happened to chance across this morning. Apparently there are going to be like 84,000 chatbots by 2030, uh, you know, em deployed in every organization throughout the yeah. world, dealing with, you know, the employee experience, basically, you know, elevating the employee experience and hopefully in a positive way, like you said, uh, we're, you know, we're programming these bots to uh, take into account the human experience. Experience, right? Um, yeah. And not just be yeah. that technology tool uh, that yeah. we can um, probably use to our advantage or, or not. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that, that goes back to what we were chatting about before, which is getting ready for the future. 
you know, and, and what, what happens is that if we know that this is going to happen, it's not about necessarily believing that it will happen exactly as we are being told it's going to happen, but believing that some of it, and maybe all of it, but some of it will actually happen. So the question is, what will be the role of the human who has the work today or of answering all of those questions that a chatbot will be answering in the next, actually now, because uh, chatbots are very prevalent today in the workplace and across companies and especially in customer service. So what is the role that humans will play? We don't wanna get to 2030 and say, all of the work that humans were doing before responding questions from uh, from other humans, now it's been done by technology. What are we going to do with all these people with that work? We have to fire them. We don't want to get to that place. No, we yeah, want to be no. ready for all the transformations to, to, well, you know, get ready for that. Yeah, I think it's more the, you know, the cobot interaction, right? How the human and yeah. the machine work together, how the human yeah. and the chatbot work together. And I think that's the crux of all of our work today in HR. Yeah. How do we make that human technology interaction work? So on that note, this brings us to the funner part of our conversation. Uh, it's the question connection section. Who is one person in HR technology that you think everyone should know about? One person. Other than you, of course. Thing. Other than you. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are there are great people. There are great people out there doing awesome work. I I, I mean, I may not want to necessarily name one of them because I, you know, I have a large community and I want to be uh, be mindful. I, I think, I think, you know, expanding on this question rather than naming one person, I think what's what's really interesting is that there are so many people in this space right now. And they are providing like insights from different angles of the same situation, right? I mean, there are people providing uh, software reviews. There are people providing process redesign to then implement technology. There are people who are providing technology research. So I think that, you know, what, what matters to me here is that there's a little bit for everybody. So, so you just have to, if you haven't found it yet, you just have to look for it because there is, if you want to know, is there a person who talks about chatbots in HR together with design thinking and agility to redesign HR processes? I, it's it's like very fabricated, but I am sure you will find somebody who is doing that. So to, to follow them and to listen to them. So that, that to me, it's what really matters here that there's a little bit for everybody and without naming any names, you know, I think um, you just look for what you're looking for and then find the people who are doing it because there are many out there who are. Absolutely. Um, so what's your favorite HR podcast on that note? I know you have your own podcast and I'm a big fan of it. What other HR podcasts would you recommend we listen to? Yeah, well, you know, I like the podcast, of course, that, um, uh, you know, all, all the TED Talk podcasts that are coming out uh, now that are shorter versions. I like Brené Brown. They're not necessarily HR, fully HR related, but they are, um, you know, in the HR space. I like Brené Brown. I like to listen to podcasts. They are not necessarily from from them, but um, I love to listen to podcasts and and shows that are not just about HR, uh, that are you know um, uh, in other spaces. You know, like uh, when Gary V shares his marketing perspective, when Simon Sinek talk about uh, talks about organizations, when Seth God, uh, Godin talks about marketing. So they are not HR, but they are the kinds of podcasts that I think when we listen to them, they make our world better in HR. Absolutely. And any LinkedIn learning courses or e-learning webinars that you would suggest that our audience look up? Uh, you know, once again, you know, I'm, I'm very mindful about not necessarily uh, 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 recommending one in, in particular, uh, but I, what I suggest to the HR space is for people in HR to look into, into skills, into uh, sessions, again, the same with podcasts that are not in the HR space, that are complementary skills to what we know. Having said that, you will find, I, I was looking recently at some uh, LinkedIn learning uh, sessions on selling, on creating business cases, on listening or empathy. All of those things may not be core, traditional, transactional HR function, but they truly impact the work that we do. So, and, and you know, we just released 
our Hacking HR lab recently. Uh, this one I'm gonna name with you know names because it's our <laughs> Hacking HR lab. Uh, and we are, in the next couple of months, we're gonna start putting out there uh, a, a format that we call micro classes. And the idea of the micro class is a very short thing, but very tangible, uh, tactical kind of content, you know, because very often you, you, you go to a class, you hear something and it remains at a very inspirational level. And what I'm trying to do with these classes is something that can help HR be better that is very tactical, that they can actually make happen. So keep an eye on what we're doing too. Absolutely. And I know you enjoy giving back to the HR community with your entire revolution <laughs> that you started with Hacking HR. How other, in how uh, other ways do you uh, contribute to the HR community? Well, I think this keeps me, all I'm doing already keeps me very busy, you know, <laughs> okay. with Hacking HR. It's, it's a lot. I mean, just... Uh, Putting, you know, we have the the our annual event coming up in uh, the second week of March. Th just that event takes an entire year for an entire team preparing. You know, I mean, uh, and to me, I have to do it myself, and then I have to do that together with the other things that we're doing. So, you know, that event, uh, you know, it's free, it's online, it's some. It's I think I'm gonna say it's one of the top five largest HR events in the world. I want to say that it has the most robust agenda of any other HR event in the world. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of uh, contribution to this HR profession, I think it keeps me already really busy. Absolutely. So thank you so much today for being on our show. And, you know, you've just added so many insights to um, help us navigate the waters uh, in 2021. <laughs> Um, if our audience wanted to connect with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? They can go to LinkedIn and, you know, look look me up. I'm Rika Rubio. They can look up Hacking HR. And, you know, I'm usually super responsive, you know, uh, whenever via email, via LinkedIn, whatever ways people can, I want to find me. So thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you again. And thank you, audience, for tuning in. I look forward to bringing you more such global HR tech stories in the future. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.